Hi, everybody in podcast land and also on YouTube. I'm James. I'm David. I'm Riley. I'm Sarah. And today on the Carpal Critics Movie Podcast, we are covering for some reason. Here's the reason. Popular demand. Everybody wanted to watch this movie. <laughs> I'm already giving you away what I think of it, eh? Yeah. Everybody wanted to watch 1997's Event yep. Horizon. Event Horizon. It's a sci-fi horror movie. And? We watched it. Spoiler alert. Because we will be spoiling it, <laughs> what there is to spoil anyway. And if you're in our convoy of listeners who watch the movies ahead of time and follow along, next week we are going to be doing uh, The Terrorists Win. <laughs> We're doing a TV show. We're doing WandaVision. What? Yes. You, do, you don't want to do a TV show? It's a bad precedent. I don't want to watch 10, 20 hours of content. Well, There's not that much in this one. I think the MCU shows, that's something that's cool about them is that they're very limited scope. Yeah. And it's also very experimental. Oh, there's mm. so much to talk about. So We're going to scope it out. MCU. That's next week. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Today, it's Event Horizon all day. David, what do you think of this movie? Incredible visuals and thick atmosphere, spelled Atmos, F-E-A-R. Oh, nice! Are undone Dolby Atmosphere. <laughs> <laughs> are undone by some real bad decisions by the crew and the crew. Event Horizon is so very close to being great. 6.66. Oh! Wow! wow. No. Yep. Put a 9 on Oh the my gosh. Okay, right to me? <laughs> Or what? Yes, please. Event Horizon sucks, but it's only because it was greenlit a mere 10 weeks before shooting began, and they shot it in only 10 months and only had four weeks to edit. So it's actually great if you watch it and imagine the movie that it would have been otherwise. <laughs> Three out of 10. Wow. <laughs> I did not enjoy this movie. Uh, I understand how people can enjoy it, I guess. Mm, galactic stinker. <laughs> Am I? Yeah, I'll probably have the lowest rating. I'll just, I'll accept it. Sarah? Okay. Paul W.S. Anderson's Event Horizon is so epically obnoxious that if it were made in the 70s, it might have actually been more well-received. Six out of ten. <laughs> okay. Okay. Event Horizon is a dated B-movie with a lot of potential energy that just culminates in little more than inert gas. 4.5 out of ten. Ah, there yeah. we go. Join me on the uh, lower than five side. It James. sucked. It sucked. <laughs> was, okay. Oh, nice. Oh, but I have so much feelings about it, though. Yeah. Like, and how close it would have been to being <laughs> sick. So which close. I will tell you about right after this message from our sponsor. <laughs> Carpool Critics is supported by Manscaped's Performance Package Kit. It comes with a ton of stuff, including the new lawnmower waterproof trimmer with advanced skin safe technology, which helps reduce nicks and cuts, their crop preserver ball deodorant, which I've used, their weed whacker nose and ear trimmer, which I should use, and their new <laughs> Shears 2.0 Luxury Nail Kit. Head over to manscaped.com forward slash carpool20 today and get 20% off. Plus, free international shipping. Plus, you'll get their shed travel bag and a pair of their anti-chafing box of briefs. Just Ooh. any reason to buy it. We have all so many reasons. Just please. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> wow. We're also brought to you by Private Internet Access VPN. PIA helps you hide your true IP address so that you can bypass geo restrictions and censorship. You can connect up to 10 devices at once and it includes an internet kill switch. Justin! I'm so happy. If your VPN gets disconnected involuntarily, PIA is available for Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and even has a cot dang Chrome extension. So check it out at lmg.gg slash carpoolcritics. My best ad reads ever. Yeah, that, that was, was great. great. That but was great. yeah, I'm a pro. Good job, James. <laughs> oh, I could probably make a movie like Event Horizon <laughs> if I put my mind to it. Do you this, do a podcast for your job? This movie was cheesy immediately. As soon as I turned around, I was like, uh oh, what have we done? Well, the, <laughs> yeah, the title sequence with like the like s hacker soundtrack yeah, song. Yeah yeah. Oh. yeah, 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 yeah. And then all the all the words can be like sucked out, yeah, like, sucked backward into this black <laughs> hole. And then there's like that um, opening crawl, like twenty twenty one, like B -d -d -d. and whenever there's a sound for the text yeah. coming on screen. <laughs> d -d 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 like, I mean, but it keeps going. So too. Like, There's like ten <laughs> different title cards that are exhibition that, that's so unnecessary. It's like twenty twenty one, we made it to the moon base. Twenty twenty three. We added a kitchen to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No, good none one. of that mattered. Oh, that was good. <laughs> and the reason that made me so mad though, was because I had an, uh, this is going to be my whole beat for this episode is James read the screenplay first mm. and it was sick. Oh. Really? And normally I, I've, I've done, there's a few episodes where I've read at least part of the screenplay ahead of time, but usually that's because I've seen the movie already and I just want to see it in a new way. Mm -hmm. This one, technically I did see as a kid, in the movie theaters because I have bad parents. Um, <laughs> like I would have been like nine. Whoa. Oh, wow. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Came out in 97? I would have been 12. 
It's okay. Ten All the bad stuff was just in like really quick montages. So I yeah, remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those like crude, like super. Yeah, yeah like the steak going through his head, through his teeth. Yeah, yeah I, like what? I actually remember zero of this. Whoa! Like the memories I have of this movie just seem like a different movie. But I know I saw it anyway. So I basically hadn't seen this movie before. Mm. And then I was reading the screenplay and I couldn't put it down. It was so engrossing, compelling. It was it was amazing. Mm. And uh, then I watched the movie. And I see this opening credit sequence. I'm like, uh-oh. What What are they? <laughs> it could be, okay, well, maybe it just has bad CG. What have uh, I like, done? Maybe it's fine. Yeah. And then they they go on to just, just destroy everything that was good about the screenplay. <laughs> like, if so I was the guy who wrote this. Philip Eisner. I would be like, like I guess you got my money. All right. I'll, like nice they, one. You, you paid painful, me. painful, though. Pardon me? It'd be so painful. Yes. I'd be pissed. I'm I'm really interested to hear uh, what what is in the screenplay that made it a better movie because I, I like I I think there's a lot of things missing. Um, right. Okay. Well, but, there's a, some things missing and some things that are just just changed. changed. It's the way they possessed did it. by a demonic entity. You could say it's it's not the what but the how. Mm. But there is some important what. Okay. At the beginning of the movie, uh, like the second scene is we're. Go, going for a meeting with the colonel and the colonel's like lieutenant assistant person where he's he's told about the mission right and they just cut this for the movie because they thought it was a boring scene that just had information that you get anyway once weir gets onto the ship mm -hmm. but i will argue that it is not that and i have several bullet points in support of this <laughs> thesis okay um which i think we should get into oh my god <laughs> after we find out what the hell happened <laughs> Okay, here's the synopsis. I segued. Yeah, <laughs> I segued you. In 2047, the starship Event Horizon reappears on the planet Neptune after vanishing seven years previously, so the rescue ship Lewis and Clark is dispatched. Captain Miller's crew is joined by Dr. William Weir, the designer of the Event Horizon, which has an experimental gravity drive capable of folding space-time. Upon boarding the Horizon, the crew finds no survivors and a whole lot of trouble. A crew member is briefly pulled into the gravity drive, causing a shockwave that forces the entire crew to board the Event Horizon. That crew member later attempts suicide, forcing the crew to put him in stasis. The team begins hallucinating. Captain Miller sees a dead crewman he was forced to abandon, while Dr. Weir is haunted by an eyeless vision of his wife, who killed herself. A video log eventually reveals the fate of the Horizons crew. They fornicated and mutilated each other to death because the ship's gravity drive opened a portal to a hellish parallel dimension, which also gave the ship sentience, of course. <laughs> Dr. Weir, be Dr. Weir becomes possessed by its evil presence and gouges out his own eyes. Miller orders an evacuation, but Weir destroys the Lewis and Clark, blasting technician Cooper into space and trapping everyone else on board the Horizon. Weir starts a 10-minute countdown until the ship will return to the Hell Dimension, but when Cooper appears at the bridge window, Weir shoots at him and is sucked into space. Miller sends surviving crew members Cooper and Stark into the forward section of the ship, intending to use explosives to separate it from the gravity drive. But he's attacked by Dr. Weir, who was brought back by the ship, quote-unquote. Miller detonates the explosives, sacrificing himself as the gravity drive activates. 72 days later, Stark, Cooper, and Justin, the crew member, uh, oh, are rescued. Whoops. 72, 72 days later, the surviving crew are rescued. And Stark thinks one of the rescuers is Weir, so she freaks out. The rescuer repeatedly yells for a sedative that never comes as the camera dollies away. Will she ever get that sedative? The end. <laughs> and he really asked for that sedative, right? <laughs> I need a sedative, stat! I need it right now! Right now, seriously, there's like two guys behind him that are just standing there, doing nothing. The camera's like, oh, it's ominous. Please, a sedative! Yeah, I want to know about the screenplay, if they spend as much time like wasted on Peter Weir because in the movie <laughs> they build him up so long like they almost it almost feels like in the first half he's the protagonist yeah but he is so unlikable even before he's possessed like why would he take someone's poster and poke holes in it what a fucking asshole <laughs> <laughs> uh, See, to answer that question actually they spend more time oh uh, well just because there's this, this big scene that's no, not that, big that's scene, but there's a scene that's missing that is more on him and I think that's kind of like a the movie's twist is that this protagonist character mm -hmm. is well but it's interesting because it's okay to have a protagonist who has a tragic end. You know, that's a tragedy. Yeah. But in this case, once he becomes the monster that they're dealing with, then he gets less screen time. You're just, 
you're not from his perspective anymore. You right. lose his point of view, and now you're following Miller. So that's kind of a twist of sorts. Yeah. I don't know if that's an effective thing to do. Yeah, like, I, w- watching this movie, I get the feeling that that was the intention to have it be a twist, but doesn't really. Feel it's like just it. so confusing and muddled that it ends up just being like nothing. Well, in the flip, ha- like there's no moment of like huge flip. Yeah, like, it's it, just it, by the time that he's been fully possessed, it's already been Miller's movie for a while. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, I guess this happened. And like in Alien, it kind of is the same thing where like you don't really know that Ripley is the protagonist until partway through right. when she kind of is one of the last surviving members and she defaults to a protagonist, and that works really well to make it feel like who's gonna live, who's gonna die. But in this, I just felt like, oh, I guess Miller is the good guy now. Like, yeah, he's the yeah. hero. This is kind of the opposite to Alien, where it's like. You're following this dude, yeah. and it's going to be his movie, and then whoop. But I agree with you where there's lots of p- times in the movie where you're like, who am I rooting for? Like, yeah. who, <laughs> whose movie is it? Does he even have a protagonist? I yeah. forget. Yeah, like at least with Alien, you kind of get character development for each character. With this one, the character development is so shitty that you're just like, okay, I know that Weir is the main protagonist, but then as soon as he like rips his eyes out and you kind of deviate away from him, you're like... Okay, but now what? Like, <laughs> that's the point of the movie that I start to like him more. <laughs> when, when <laughs> when that, I'm like, all right, I get this. I get who you are now. <laughs> yeah, I understand. Yeah. I was really expecting or hoping that there was going to be some twist, like his wife was on the crew of the Event Horizon mm, or something. And he's or trying like, to get her back or yeah, something. Yeah, or, or he was possessed the whole time. Yeah. And this was like his his mission was just to screw it all up once they got to Event Horizon or something. But there was just nothing. A big part of the confusion is like, what is his motive? And like, at what point is he possessed? Because like he'll flip flop between like being really weird and gaslighty towards the other people. They're like, I saw something. He's like, you didn't see anything. And everyone's like, no, I saw it too. He's like, no, you didn't see anything. Yeah. And then the next scene, he'll like, he'll be with them and he'll be like mourning someone who died. And like, it's so unclear what his journey towards being possessed is. Ah. And none of this is a problem in the screenplay. Uh, it's not. Oh, why? Because. Oh, your points. Get back to your bulleted <laughs> points. <laughs> okay. So he goes and has this meeting, right? And this meeting sets up a bunch of things. So basically, it's the colonel saying, we just have received this beacon, like this message from over by Neptune. And you're never going to guess what it is. And he, he gives him this like dossier and he's looking through it and he's like, this doesn't, this is impossible. This doesn't make any sense. And it's the event horizon. Whoa. Oh. What is that? Well, it is this famous fucking ship that everyone in the, every human in the galaxy is aware of. Um, the star so it has some mystique to it. Right. Okay. Right. It matters. Uh, it was a huge human achievement. And when it, when it failed, so too human like humans lost their ability to imagine and the, the things that they could do you know oh, like wow. we're trying to reach I know that theme is gone <laughs> yeah. because part of there's a big sci-fi theme here it's like humans kind of we went too far now we're, right, now it's right. like it's against nature j- just like Jurassic Park yeah you know I think that you could like try to extract that theme out of this movie uh, so, like yeah. but it would it would take it's some a lot work of effort. and it's definitely it, it definitely doesn't put that forward yeah. to you yeah, yeah. and then uh, we're also like he is not invited to come on the mission. The colonel is, uh, is just like, I need you to give this crew of the Lewis and Clark a briefing so that they can go and salvage it. Mm. And he's like immediately like, oh, no, no, no. It's way too detailed for me to give them a briefing. I need to be on this ship. And it's, he, it's way too detailed. I, I base the ship off a uh, Notre Dame cathedral. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's way too complicated. So he, he fights to get put on the ship. He really wants to be on the ship. So it's clear immediately that he's obsessed with it and that it's his like life's work and he has this reverence for it, okay? Mm, right. Um, so you get that element of his character fleshed out. You get the mystique of the ship. Like the the character, what the uh, like lieutenant person actually says, if... if the Titanic showed up in New York Harbor, that would be more believable than mm. the event horizon coming back. Like this is crazy that it's back. This is that's a line. Yes. Oh, he wow. says that. Right and, and that's when you take that out. Suddenly, instead, you have Weir in this like. Suddenly, he's on the crew. He's on like the bridge of this ship with all these people he doesn't know, and you don't really know that he doesn't know them. And then he's like, uh, "We're here uh, because we got a message from the Event Horizon." And everyone's like, "Really? That disappeared seven years ago?" And you're like, "Who? Eh, it doesn't have the yeah, same like yeah. gravitas." Yeah. We were just like, have, oh, that's some ship. That, that, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. Does this discussion happen before they get in the gravity pods or after they get in the gravity or the, stasis. the gravity the stasis? couches? Yeah, yeah, yeah gravity the, couches. Yeah, it, yeah. It, Is that what they're called? Yeah. <laughs> For some reason, they call them couches, even though they're like 
tubes filled with water. They're clearly yeah. recliners. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lazy tubes. Because in the movie, they're on the ship all together, but they don't introduce each other until after they've gone into stasis and come out of the gravity couches. Like, why was there no introduction? It's so weird. There's beforehand. no time. There's no time. Oh, the ion drive's going to fire in 10 minutes. Yeah, they only have enough ca- <laughs> carbon tubes for 20 minutes. Yeah. Jeez, yeah, please. I think th- um, that all happens. So Weir is introduced in his like little pod. That's one of the first shots. Like he's having the dream. Then he wakes up in his little room. Oh yeah. And then after that, he goes to a different part of that space station and has this conversation. Then it cuts to he's on the ship, and yeah. he's he's like it's in the screenplay where he's like, hey Miller, I just want to say this is so cool. Thank you so much. And and Miller is just always all business. And he's like, no, we don't have time for that shit. Uh, go over and talk to this person. And when they are getting him ready to go on the couch, then you get some characterization for each mm, person, right, right? right? Like, oh, you ever done this before? Well, I'm the doctor on the ship. Here's this. That guy, he's the resident asshole. He's gonna be yeah. like. Yeah. Yeah. Then they all go to sleep. They wake up and you get more of it. And that's when Mir says the mission. You guys don't even know why we're leaving right. uh, or why we're here. This is the reason. And, and one more thing that makes that even better is there's more conflict set up because this is shown in the movie, but it's not like drilled is the fact that all these people were supposed to go on leave. They just mm. got done what they were doing in space. Mm. Now they're supposed to be off for like two months. Yeah, that's a throwaway line in this one. But yeah. Uh, yeah, there's like more emphasis based, spaced. Well, there's spaced on it. <laughs> they placed. they say it like in the conversation with the colonel. It says like you know we're gonna put the best people on it. They they have like a well deserved leave, but uh, fuck it. And then all the people on the ship later on, it's just you're hearing it for the second time. So, being like so, I'm supposed to go home. I'm supposed to see my son. I haven't seen him in t- two months. So do you know if they filmed those parts? This scene can be watched on YouTube. Oh wow. But it's that's not going to so... save the movie <laughs> no, no, because the reason they cut it, one of the reasons is because it's boring. And that's mm. not because it's poorly written. It's because the filmmakers, and I say this with all the respect due to people who actually finish a feature film, like it's crazy. Everyone oh, is talented, but sure. they suck. <laughs> like they, they're not talented enough to make this movie. Yeah. And I, that's why I'm advocating here now. They need to remake Event Horizon. Oh, it is absolutely. so right for a remake. Yeah. Well, they're making a TV show. Get out of town. Yeah, <laughs> it's being rebooted. Oh, right. And so Amazon that. and Paramount are working together to make a TV show. And I think that's, I totally agree. I think there's so much potential to this. And like, there's such good pieces to this movie. Uh, I think like the visuals, like the ship design, the cinematography is friggin' stellar. Uh, and I think even the, the crew. The ship design? Yeah. So, uh, can, continue. What? what? Keep going. <laughs> the, <laughs> but I think like kind of more to what you were saying, I think the crew dynamic, even though they've dropped a lot of it, the performances are good enough that I buy their relationships. I buy the dynamics that's that, that it's within them. Sure. And I yeah. think that uh, that worked really well for me outside of Weir. Uh, right, right. But like the actual crew, I was like, yeah, I, yeah, I get I, who they are. I get like what they want, mostly. A lot of that, I, I agree. I think that the, the crew definitely felt like they were kind of, they were a real crew. I uh, There were some interactions where it was like, okay, we're doing Alien or something. Like, mm-hmm. in, even the conference room where they kind of meet and have their little, uh, he, he explains the gravity drive to them or whatever. It looks like the Alien uh, totally. crew uh, room. And yeah. Uh, yeah, a lot of it felt very, very uh, cliche in terms of these kind of like, we're a crew and we're heading out on a mission type 100%. situation. And, well, I, and I, bending that piece of paper. Like, yeah. this is how time, <laughs> yeah. like we've yeah, seen yeah. that yeah. interstellar and everything I, since. I think though, I, this movie kind of came out at the wrong time where like there wasn't that much distance between Alien 2 and 3 mm. before this. And so like the world was already tired of sci-fi horror movies and it feels like we haven't gotten a good like alien knockoff for a long time. So I felt this was kind of like refreshing a little bit in a mm. weird way where I was like, I haven't seen this movie in a long time. So mm. I haven't seen this movie ever, but like a movie like this. I feel like... Overall, I was just kind of disappointed by the lack of follow through with the ramifications of the premise, mm. like what it actually meant. I think it just ended up being being kind of goofy and there wasn't really a I didn't get the real horror that I think could have been there if if things were a little bit more. I don't know, like like foreboding. Oh, I think I want to talk that it was about too the horror, but let's stick like on the they pacing. got there. They the, got there yeah. and they immediately find a corpsicle and like weird blood, weird like tissue kind of like growing on the walls. Oh, and stuff. Riley, this is a perfect segue back into why they screwed this up. Okay, because on the page, <laughs> it's ev- like I had a whole different movie playing in my head mm-hmm. where it's slow and and plotting mm-hmm. and fucking dark in there they only have the light of their helmets when they're on the event horizon mm, yeah. in the screenplay yeah and in the movie it's not really like that they they get in there and 
they just kind of walk. First of all, they kind of walk around even though they haven't turned on the gravity yet. Yeah, and they're supposed to all be floating around. They have magnet. They have boots. Ma- yeah, they have magnet boots. Okay, sure. they don't. Then okay, they don't. Not but, in the screenplay. <laughs> oh no. Oh, okay. I see. No, everyone's floating, and then oh, they finally yeah. turn on the gravity. It's like, oh, okay, now we can yeah. walk around normally. Okay, but they have magnetic boots in the movie, but not yeah. in the screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, but and <laughs> when they see that first corpsicle, um, it's uh, who is it? The the woman with the dark hair, Peter. Yeah, is her yeah, name. yeah Peter. She sees it and she's just a professional. The f- mm. She like she sees it and she's like, oh, yeah, oh, we got a corpse here. Yeah, but like, okay. Which is, but yeah. in the movie, it's not really like that. It's like supposed to be like a, the first like jump scare. Mm. Yeah, I yeah. That- I feel like I, I don't know. I felt like they were treating it too uh, routine. They were just like, yeah, well, the ship showed up, and uh, we just got to find out if there's anybody on board. Okay, let's let's go check it out, guys. Uh, and I'm like, guys, this is really weird. Like, it's a ship that was been, yeah. been gone for so, seven years, and then it reappeared. Can we, like, treat it with a little more... It's because of the pacing. It has a ton of reverence on the screen, like, yeah. uh, or on the page. In the screenplay, there's all these ships of, look how small their ship is compared to the Event Horizon. And then they have this long docking sequence. And then they have them all suiting up and going in. And one thing they don't uh, set up in the movie is... Little Bear, Justin, has yeah. the t- tether, right? Right. He's the only one with the tether. There's supposed to be lines oh. in the movie. There's a little interaction, or excuse me, on the screenplay, there's a little interaction uh, where it says, um, Miller, Peters, and Justin enter the airlock. Justin attaches his safety line. Miller and Peters do not. Cooper says, you still need the rope? I thought you were one of those spacemen with ice in your veins. Uh. Um, I never read this character as black, but I guess maybe he... It says ice in your veins. Who? who? What character? <laughs> Co- Cooper. Cooper's black. That's yeah, funny. yeah. Um, anyway, um, they set that up, and then once they're entering the ship, the, it's always like cut back to Cooper watching the safety line unspool, mm-hmm. and it's like 150 meters, 200 meters, and they're watching that. That would have been good. They're all going into the ship slowly, and they're yeah. all in the dark, and they can't see shit. And then as uh, Justin gets up to the engineering. In the movie, he opens up this door and there's this crazy spinning, like, <laughs> looks like a meat grinder hallway. Yeah. In the screenplay, a giant or a uh, giant door opens part way and he sneaks his oh. body through, and that's just scary. That's you don't scary. need you don't yeah. need paranormal stuff. It's really dark. It's a really big door. Yeah. And then his friends are out of radio contact with him, and all they see is his safety line start to accelerate until it's going. <laughs> up to 500 meters then clunk yeah, it's yeah. the end of the safety line it's so much more intense yeah, and slow right, yeah um, i can i can see that they but t- the movie's like cutty yeah it's yeah truly like you start with all of the people in the ship and we're talking about their mission and they're like no not the event horizon and then when they dock to go onto the ship they like not a care in the world they're like all <laughs> yeah. right let's go <laughs> it yeah it just doesn't make sense and i i think a Part of that is the whole like military sort of feel that we get in these movies where, you know, the the way that these people deal with stress is by kind of joking around and making it be like seem like this is just, you know, routine. It's like, all right, let's go because because otherwise they would, you know, be yeah. anxious wrecks and stuff. Um, but uh, I want to talk a little bit about the ship design because of that hallway and whatnot, because there's a there, there's so much stuff in this movie that I like I see like an architectural feature. And I'm like, this doesn't look like something humans would actually make in a spaceship. You know, even in 2047. It looks like an evil spaceship. It bothers me so much because it's like the, the... the influence from the Alien franchise is is so obvious. Mm. The gravity drive, why does it look like? like there's it's so like much, spiky. Yeah, it's like spiky and there's like weird, like it looks like stone work, like really intricate. See, how do, you, what, how do you know what a gravity drive looks like? I think it looks sick. I'm it saying, does look dope. It yeah. looks cool <laughs> if it was made by the Prometheans. Yes. It does look Aztecian kind it's of. It's like gothic. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah. Make, it doesn't look like a futuristic device that humans would make. How do you know? Maybe those things what are shields to protect I, the black hole. David, that's a dumb argument. No, you're, I'm, not, I'm saying that you have no idea what a warp drive looks well, like. Well, you have the screenplay, and that's not how it's described. I know what warp that's... drives look like in every other science fiction <laughs> fan franchise, and people seem to agree that they should look like something the military would come up with yeah, but now. It, like you're a, talking about like Star Trek's warp drive or like Star Wars. That's not horror. This is horror. And like well, by okay. design, this thing is scary. It's a mix of two different shapes, circles and triangles. And circles are like a, a shape of eternity, of, of complete. <laughs> No, I d- and I triangles it, are yeah. a shape of danger and violence, and you combine them, it's unsettling. I, I, it's horror. I absolutely agree that that's why they did it. I don't like it. <laughs> I think it's so cool, and I think it's I an incredible set. Yeah. Well, this is really an I, interesting I think argument. I think it's an, incre- it's an incredible set 
because because it's like obviously a lot of work went into it and a lot of design went into it i will give you that right yeah. like it's oh you look at it as like oh you put a lot of work into making something this intricate but for me I, when i'm watching one of these movies i am looking to be as we talked about in the previous episode immersed and seeing stuff that doesn't look like it would ever exist in a real universe uh breaks that immersion and then doesn't make me scared it has the opposite effect because i'm like yeah, right. Like they would make it look like that. Like They're, NASA I, built yeah. it to look like a haunted house. Yeah, when I see something like that, all I think of is the director making it that way in order to try and elicit a certain feeling in me. It yeah. takes me out of it. So I'm like, okay, that means it's a bad design because you had the opposite effect that you wanted to have. I don't know. I think that it was awesome. Like, if it works for I, you, cool. Yeah, you know? and I mean, like, what, what are you expecting? It's a movie where a spaceship goes to hell and back. Like, it's not realistic science. But you can have that story in a spaceship that looks realistic. It's I, don't, also I totally disagree. I think that mean? thematically, it's so much, it's so much it's more interesting. Yeah, it's, it's also the 90s. Like, right. yeah. a great example of that is how there's the button to open the door. And nowadays, you'd be like, why didn't they make it touchscreen? But in mm-hmm. the 90s, of course, they're going to make it a press button. Yeah. Right. A little more. Well, and I don't want it. another spaceship that looks like a spaceship like it's way cooler that it looks like churches because they go to fucking hell like that's so much more cool that it's a Notre Dame spaceship because then it's like ooh like the church is moving into hell and like the dimension is for, it's like it, it's all foreshadowed I don't want like another 2001 spaceship okay, that's okay. boring as you guys far. are talking about artifice again we're, we're, remember this yes. this argument about whether or not a movie should be, have artifice right. like Batman Forever versus Batman Begins yes we're, and, we're and coming at it from two different you're saying it, it's cool for like if it's gonna be scary it might as well look all scary and mm-hmm. cool and they have some artistic license and it looks yep. that way whereas, and you're saying that well it looks it feels contrived because yeah. NASA why what, they would have the same <laughs> design language for all their ships exactly. why is the scavenger ship yeah. different than this so, ship and I kind of go with Riley's side on this because if you think of another what was that uh, Cloverfield uh, movie that's in space the Cloverfield Paradox yeah that's yeah. a scary movie, but they just have yep. normal ships, and it can still be scary. And, and it's, I would go, it's such a generic ship. Well, I would go earlier than 1997 and look at, you know, we just did 2001 A Space Odyssey. All the ships in that movie look like real ships that would exist in the future, mm-hmm. and that's a very unsettling, scary movie. Uh, uh, alien, that's the first so Alien, different. the first Alien was 1979, and its ships look like real ships. Because I think it's and that's still, a super, yeah, super scary movie. It can still be scary if it, as long as the lights are low. Yeah, it's and, all about the atmosphere, and I, I think that, like, they tried too hard. They did too much. I guess I was willing to go with this movie's Venus. Right. And like I bought into that and I <laughs> yeah. totally I went in with really low expectations and they surpassed it. I was like, this is fun, this is weird, this is stupid. Yeah. Uh, but I'm enjoying like the creativity that went into this from so many different departments, and it doesn't add up to more than the sum of its parts, but like I like that 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 haunted like spaceshipness. Yeah. You it. enjoyed its giant Venus. Totally. And I, and oh, I don't I want to take away anyone's enjoyment of the Venus of movies. Uh, <laughs> I don't like Venuses, okay? <laughs> For, for the most part, I am not willing to go along with like a movie being a bad movie, be, but it's fun. You mm-hmm. know, if it's a bad movie, I'm like, this is a bad movie. I'm not going to enjoy it. Then what you could say is sad. Well, <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> okay. No, okay. Star Wars is a great movie. It's not a B movie. You, I don't think you could ever make the argument that Star no, Wars I'm, is a B movie. I'm just mad. But <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'm with David on this one. I went in with extremely low expectations. Mm. I listened to a well, podcast about it beforehand, and they were shit talking <laughs> it. And so when I went into watching it, I was like, okay, just expect the worst. And then when I saw this extremely intricate set design, I was like, maybe this movie isn't bad after all. And then I was so distracted by how incredible those explosions were. or like the gore that the plot honestly got lost for me. And I just, I don't know. I just, and that's a good thing. Yeah. I would say so. I don't know. You're not watching this movie for the writing. I think for me, that's like the worst part of this is the pacing and the writing. And like, right. it's too bad because like, it sounds like the screenplay was really good and there was lots of potential. I think they killed it in the edit. Yeah, you can really see the studio interference of this mm. film. The original yeah. cuts like 130 minutes. They had four weeks to make the first edit. And you can see that they had to cut tons of character stuff, tons of gore. And I'm like reading what the gore was. I'm like, I'm kind of happy that they cut most of it. Hmm. But there's a lot of character stuff where they set up their fears and why those specific things that happen to them are so bad. Like, uh, what's his face? Who has, like, the scar on his chest? And when he gets dissected, like, you find out that when he was a kid, he, he was very sick and he had all these procedures done to him. So that's why he has this crazy fear of being dissected. And so... But that's not in that's, the movie, right? No, it's not. And yeah. that's cut. And that sucks. Because, like, 
you know, you see the scar, you see him get dissected, but it just means nothing. Yeah. You're just like, oh, yeah. it's just a stupid horror I think thing. it wasn't just uh, studio interference in the edit. It seems like the editor's style. You know, people mm. say the movie's written three times, like in the screenplay and then uh, during filming and then again in the edit. And in this one, it seems like the style was just to, every scene, they just cut off like 10 seconds yeah. too, too quick. Well, it's one of those movies that's too fast and too slow. Because like the first 40 minutes, it feels like it's all exposition. All the, the, the horror stuff that's building, it doesn't work at all. It's all these cheap jump scares, like a door closing or like... <laughs> A glove. A glove. Oh. And it feels so cheap that like I didn't feel any tension building. Yes, because yeah. they fucked up the tension like I was saying. Because totally. when they first get on the sh ship, yeah. that is your opportunity for all the tension. Yes. The right. music sucks during that so part. So bad, yeah. yeah. There's no tension. And they made all these decisions that were better in the screenplay. Okay, so one thing that stood out to me was when the first gravitational wave comes out mm -hmm. and it kind of blows up the, the uh, Lewis and Clark and they're kind of screwed. In the screenplay, that coincides with the first paranormal stuff for each of these different characters and has way more impact. It's like, at the same time that's happening, Justin's tether is like going ape shit. Miller has his first sighting of the guy in flames. And then, the, and Peters has her first sighting of um, when that body bumps into her. She looks at it a, a second time and it's her son. Yep. Did that happen in the movie? No. no. Yeah, it's she, only the zipper thing that. Yeah. yeah. Right. So she has a second encounter and. Uh, uh, it's her son's face like he's floating there and the the eyes are like alive <clears throat> and then he um she goes out to reach to him and he like just bumps against the wall and like pfft, shatters, oh, shatters in glass and so all of those things are happening at the Ooh, same time it's like cool. this sick like yeah climax crescendo the, yeah, yeah. yes I, I i really want to believe that there is a good movie uh hidden underneath this one that just kind of like didn't get the the, the proper chance to be made you know but at the same time it's Paul Anderson, and I'm looking at his IMDb <laughs> here, and I can't see mean? a movie that Resident I, Evil's so good. <laughs> the first Resident <laughs> Evil, yeah, Monster Hunter, huge box office hit uh, last year. Did that come out already? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even know it was out. <laughs> Is that based on the no, game? I totally. Uh, it's based, yeah, it's based on the video so, game. So like this was but his it's second. Not really based on the video game. Event Horizon is his second major movie after Mortal Kombat. Mortal Kombat. Oh, the son of a bitch! I didn't even know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I agree with you. I think. Like if you could go back and edit what he shot, it, you could make a slightly better movie, but sure. you couldn't make a great movie. I don't right. think it's well acted. You said it might be. I think that there's some characters that are. I think Lawrence Fishburne really does it Honestly. for me. He's like, such a great actor. I think most of the crew does their job. I don't think like they're gonna win an Oscar. Well, I mean, they obviously didn't win an Oscar, but I don't think that they took me out of it. They 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 help contain me within the reality of this movie. Yeah, you watch did. a lot of horror movies. What do you think of the acting level? Um, I think the acting was fine. Honestly, it wasn't the first thing that I was looking at. I, I, I loved the gore aspect and I loved <laughs> like the action aspect of it so much that it, it just didn't really yeah. matter to me in the end. The, the, I think the fear acting was really good. Like Justin, when he has like his first seizure and waking up, I was like, I, I felt it. I was like, Ooh, this is messed up. And like, there's a few moments in this movie where I, like my body had a reaction. The biggest one being. Uh, when Weir wakes up in the pod and everyone else is asleep, and you, for a second I thought like he was gonna be like stuck in there, oh, and he's yeah. like claustrophobic, and he like just no one's awake. He's stuck there for days or weeks. Right. And I had this crazy sense of like, oh god. Yeah, yeah. Oh man. And so there's moments in the movie where the fear is real, and like I think the characters really sell that. Um, Unfortunately, but, I, oh yeah. no, go ahead. No, just the complexity of why they're feeling the depths of fear they're feeling maybe isn't yeah. quite hit. Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest, I think the acting was great as well. I didn't, I don't think I ever felt taken out of it by like an actor's performance in this movie. I did. Um, <laughs> uh, well, okay, maybe a few times, but um, I think the biggest, I think the bigger thing as you're saying, David, is the lack of kind of character development that would give us reason to really be concerned for these mm -hmm. characters. I think that we don't learn enough about any one of them to really care in any given encounter what is going to happen. And we're like, no, 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 I hope he survives. It's yeah. like, well, it doesn't really matter whether he survives yeah. or not. I think, oh man, the jump scares are, I, in my opinion, there are some decent ones, but the vast majority of them are just not. So cheesy. They're so bad. So bad. So bad. Um, I didn't even. I think like, one of the, even... wait, one of the early ones is we are having a, a vision of his of his wife and she's like doesn't have the eyes or whatever and it pans up to her face and she's like I'm waiting oh and it God. says shows that she has no eyes and it, looks so bad. it cuts back to Doctor Weir and he just goes. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. part, uh, the, I just the laughed first out loud. Part of that dream or that vision, out. when it's him floating in the ship, and it's like kind of got the cross shape where you can see through space. Mm. That was gorgeous. Yeah, that was there a good was shot. like there's yeah. there's some shots in this that I'm like, this is 
way better than this movie deserves. And that, mm. like, that's one of them. And I think that's part of why I like the ship design is that the way that it integrates lighting and like a lot of them will be these long corridors with like these panels of lighting. Yeah. And they do a couple of times, like they do a big vertigo shot uh, with Sam, uh, Sam Neill in the thing where he's like trying to figure it out. It's a super cheesy scene. You here mean when he's voice. in those like tunnels, kind of yeah, like 2001 Space Odyssey, and yeah. the lights are going all yeah. Uh, and like the whole scene's really cheesy. You can hear his wife and whatever. But there's a big vertigo shot, and then when it fully extends, if you don't know what a vertigo shot, basically what you do is you dolly a camera in and zoom out, or the opposite. Oh, when the background's all yeah, like they so do in Fellowship of the Ring. When yeah, they first yeah. see when they, they first see the the uh, yeah and it, it's basically got, uh, like it's in it Jaws yeah. or yeah. whatever yeah. Dolly and it, it's it's made to make you feel like there's a big reaction but what they do to kind of like extend it is that it as the scene fully extends then all the lightings panel by panel turn off mm. and so it's kind of like a second dimension to this vertigo shot and I was like that's sick that was sweet yeah I was like that's really cool and the same with like the the long corridor I get why you think it's cheesy with all the explosives because. That's a stupid thing for a ship is to have an explosive net. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even it's talk so about, dangerous. I didn't even talk about how like yeah. impractical the design is. But, but yeah. what I really like is how then there's all these big light panels. And then there's a couple times where they're walking through and they just one by one turn off. Mm. And it's so incredible because there's still like rim lighting. You can see the edges. And visually, it's gorgeous. And I can I can understand why the artifice of it is too much. But, but this mm. is in the screenplay as well. You're supposed to have it so, be so dark in there. You only have the light from Jupiter coming mm. through these windows and there's actually a scene that they, they again they botched was remember the, all that gore is behind her uh, oh, yeah. when she first gets into the lab where they screwed that up because the way it was supposed to be was that she goes in there and everything's frozen right and and there's no gravity and so she goes in there and there's there's like these red crystals suspended in the air and it's blood right so she she takes out this little s sample container from her belt and she's like carefully is trying to capture this one suspended crystal um and then she's like, come on. And it's a close-up of the blood crystal and a close-up of her face. And then I'll just read it directly here. Uh, Peter's brow furrowed with concentration. Wider, as, and this is caps lock, wider as a flash of blue lightning illuminates the room, revealing the wall behind Peter's cased oh. in a frozen explosion of blood and tissue. Someone died here in a violent and terrible way. Peter starts to look up, but the flash dies away. She never saw the horror behind her. Oh. Like, it's so much better. Is, yeah. she, is there a book? Is there a book of this? No. It's just they so should cool. make a book. You can see the movie in your head. Or yeah. you can yeah. just play Dead Space. Yeah. <laughs> because it's very similar. Uh, or just watch Alien 1 well, and 2. Or Doom. <laughs> it's, honestly, that's what I thought. I'm like, this is the prequel to Doom. This would be such a sick. If at the end, it's just like the Demon Slayer fucking comes out and he's just like, ready to go. <laughs> so so you know that shot where um, where Weir is in his pod on the pa on the space station and the his window shade, I guess, opens up. It goes. That's the same sound effect from Doom. Huh. So, Dude, some of the sound effects did you notice? I have a marker down for an hour and 25 minutes, guys, if you're watching this movie. There's a sound effect that's just like... Whoosh. <laughs> yeah, there's some bad sound yeah, effects. Particularly in the last fight, it's just all these like stock yeah. sound effects. Yeah. Th that scene, though, are you done? Uh, well, I just wanted to say, I just wanted to say that rotating shot, the big rotating shot coming out of the space station, yeah. which is unfortunate because we... like. That's the only thing we see of the space station. Then next scene, he's like getting into the actual spaceship, and that's all we see. Anyways, we have this giant, huge, ro super long rotating shot establishing the space station, and that apparently took up th a third, third of yeah. the visual effects budget. Not that's really it. sad. Not and, worth it. And I, I, I wrote down. I didn't know that when I was watching it, but I wrote down. I'm like, oh, it's so annoying. I hated it. <laughs> I was like, oh, was we get it. It's right. I'm like, and I was like trying to make sense of what I was looking at. I'm like, what am I look? What is it? And it's just like it's like ugly. Uh, it's like everything's brown and rusted. I'm just like, what? see, I like that stuff, and I think like in a more disorienting movie, it would be really cool to have stuff like that. But because this movie is so easily understand understood, it's just it's oh, long this, and boring. You guys yeah, are making this even more painful for and me. And it's <laughs> annoying because we don't even spend any time on the space station. So why do we yeah. need just Riley, like such will, a crazy establishing? I will tell shot. you why that shot is not supposed to be an establishing I shot. Know. It's supposed to be a reveal. Yeah. Because mm. they screwed this up when he opens his eyes, having just had that vision mm. of himself uh, by the way he it's supposed to just be his like frozen face with his eyes gone and his mouth open in a scream but instead they sh use the character model like all cut up and yeah, everything yeah, yeah. whatever it's supposed <laughs> to be on the bridge where like the bridge is all dark and icy except there's an emergency light beeping and that illuminates this like this frozen body that you know turns around except they changed they changed the shot to be like you see the floating body at the beginning of the yeah. shot the whole time whatever that's all fine 
it, he wakes up, but when he wakes up in the screenplay, it says he wakes up in a nice apartment, which is clearly decorated by a woman. And it's an apartment for two. Mm. And then he's got a photo by the bed and he looks at it. And then he, he puts it down in this other like cabinet that looks like a shrine to his wife. And then he walks over here and he makes a coffee and he walks over there and he brushes his teeth. And then he opens up his blinds and that reveals for the first time that he's uh, on a space station. Oh when he opens his that blinds. incredible. Yeah. Yes, because when he in the movie, when he opens his eyes, you, he's in a bunk. Right. And there's like pictures on the wall and you can tell that okay he's on a spaceship spaceship. but in this he's supposed to look like he's just a normal guy who misses his wife and in the pictures of his wife she looks like emaciated and brave Mm. like she died maybe like struggled with cancer before she killed herself or something Mm. Uh, and in this it's like he opens the blinds which are space station metal blinds and then the shot is rotating for like no reason in the screenplay it's rotating because it's her first indication he's on a space station who wrote the who wrote it Peter Philip Eisner Okay, so he hasn't really written anything else. It wasn't Paul because Ander- Paul Anderson has written things. No, but he didn't write this. So basically, just read the the screenplay and don't bother <laughs> yeah. with the movie. Well, and it's it's such yeah. an interesting thing because he went to the studio execs and he pitched it as like The Shining in Space, and they're like, hell yeah! But he didn't have a treatment. He didn't have a plan. He just went home and wrote it. And the first draft, they loved it, and they made him like retool it and stuff. But basically, yeah, from green light to shooting, it was ten weeks, which is insane. Right. And it's insane that they built such good sets in fucking 10 weeks. The production designer had four weeks to, like, build the sets. Yeah, those are such good sets. Well, I have some par- <laughs> I have some things, gripes. I don't like that freaking chair. I don't like that yes. chair on the rail. That's oh, like- I love it! Wait, <laughs> shut up, David. It's Come awesome! On. You like the captain's chair on the <laughs> Lewis and Clark? That is so 90s. It's so yeah. jank. It's so jank. Okay. It doesn't look like a chair. It looks like a prop. Everyone else on the fucking, in their chairs, which swivel like normal chairs, yeah, and the, the Miller <laughs> like you go do this you go do that yeah. and the person he's talking to just swivels out and gets the hell onto what they're doing yeah. and then he has to move it <laughs> so slow. and then finally step out it's like debilitating yeah. i love and then it. he gets out of the chair and it like swings because the, the mount yeah. is unstable yeah, kind of jittery like what i, I don't it. know it's not in the screen in the screenplay it's a two-level bridge and his chair like goes like Up an elevator down. or something yeah like that's that. just too expensive they couldn't make it happen i don't know there's so Man. many things like that where i'm just like what is going on with the level of technology here? Just like, don't question it. Like, the, <laughs> yeah, well, clearly that's yeah. the answer. <laughs> but like, we've explored the entire, or we haven't even explored the entire solar system. But we have artificial gravity. Like uh, the, the 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 scanners they're using are just like big giant flashlights with like lights going back and forth. But it also scans for life forms. Like, I don't know. There's just from a as a sci-fi fan. Um, the the level of tech is just so confusing and, and uh, inconsistent to me. And I think you can really tell that they were just going for the alien look. They, yes. they wanted the industrial, like, hardcore mining looking yeah. ship. And, like, it is a little bit confusing in terms of, like, what do they have? But that stuff doesn't bother me at all. Uh, you know what bothers me? When they first see the Event Horizon and it just has a giant, like, billboard letters on it that say <laughs> Event Horizon. Horizon. <laughs> like, what? There's Welcome. writing on it? Well, it's like the Titanic. Yeah, so. no, that's not that unusual. I would they say. Would, yeah. Yeah. Boats have... pass by other people, and you look at them, and they're like, "Oh, that's the Titanic." Well, yeah, if you're, if you're living on Mars, you want to be able to see the little you, tiny thing on the hey, hey, <laughs> That's distance is that's, space. That's a trope in sci-fi to have yeah, the name uh, of the ship yeah. on the ship. Like, that, wasn't it on that. the front too? Yeah. Like, why would it be on the no, front? They just it's put stickers stupid. everywhere. They might as well cover it. You know, yeah. like just cover all the bases. It would have been like twenty stories tall. You know, one thing that bothered me about the incoming scene of them going up to the event horizon is that they're all panicked they're like oh we're this close we're this close we're this close as if yeah. they can't slow down slow down oh. but they could they could pull the thruster at any time 200 meters 200 meters yeah. okay but this is what this is why that scene was so confusing to so me as well stupid. they're in the atmosphere of neptune how are they just floating there in midair the gra- gravity is a thing but it, it's like they're far enough that it's not they're in a- they're inside the atmosphere <laughs> there would be like you're heavy right, gravity right. forces on them unless right. they're actually in orbit. But that's the only science in this movie that doesn't add up. <laughs> <laughs> I think the thing that really bothered me the most is when uh, Sam Neill has that scene where he's shaving his own neck. And like that's a movie trope where like a person is shaving someone's neck with a blade razor and they're like, it's like a threat thing where like they, I could kill them right now or whatever. And like, but in this case, it's so stupid. He's shaving his own neck. He's not crazy yet, but he's having this moment of like, oh. And it's like supposed to be a fear moment. It's supposed to be tension or something. But right. it's like, dude, he's just shaving. Is this the yeah. first scene? <laughs> One of the first scenes with him. I really expected maybe, him to go ahead. Do you think maybe it's like indicating? Did how 
did his wife kill herself with a razor yes. blade? And I think that's okay, what it's so, supposed to be. Yeah, is like, that's just it's building up towards that, but it's just so silly. Like you, you can, it's great that it has a second purpose, but it needs to accomplish its first purpose first. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wouldn't he, have aligned that until like literally just now. Yeah. So he, he did also just wake up from a dream where he's, it's a foreshadowing dream. His eyes sockets. Okay, fine. The whole thing. <laughs> I want to. I want to talk a little bit about. We we mentioned characterization earlier and how it's kind of confusing about who the protagonist is or whatever. But like, who do you think is the most? Like, did did you you watch when you're watching this movie? Do you have any sense that you are following a character and that you're attached to one of them? Like, is I there... think halfway through you get become very attached to Lawrence Fishburne's character. Yeah. And like, I get what he's going for, and it makes sense. And like, he's he's smart, and he's not. He's not doing stuff that you're like, that's dumb. He's like, I want to get home. I don't want to deal with the ship. We're going to go away. We're going to blast it. We're going to blow it up. This thing is fucked. We're going. We also get that vulnerable moment where he talks about his past Mm. and the the rationale of why he's seeing the demons he is. I I think that that allows us to kind of latch on to him a bit more as a protagonist, but I, it bothers me that it happens so late in the movie. We spend so much of the movie having where we are be our, kind of anchor right because we spent the most time with him up front and then after the halfway point uh we learned this stuff about captain miller and he left a crewman behind and so i guess his progression as a character is going to be from um i left this crewman behind and i have guilt about that and so instead of leaving someone behind i'm going to leave myself behind and sacrifice myself so my crew can escape Mm -hmm. so it's like okay that's a bit of a character progression but it all happens after the halfway point yeah so it's so hard for me to kind of like like I, I think you're right that he is that that character for the audience, but it it was it's so awkward. It's just confused. you don't want to move on after you've invested in one character. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that there's also a bit of character development with Peters, who's mm. like the female character with short hair, because you see her the first discussion that she's having with, I believe it's. Um, the JD? captain, Captain Miller, yeah. uh, oh, about how mind. they tried to find a replacement for her so that she could go back to be with her son. And she's right. like, oh, I found her, like my ex is going to watch him for the summertime, whatever. Mm. And there's a cut line there where she actually says, I haven't seen him in two months. Mm. Oh, yeah. See, that's that's. I guess not... they just dropped that whole thing of them being on leave or they, they should have been on leave. Yeah. And then she's watching a video of her son and then you see her open the tent and you see her son with his legs all messed up. Yeah. Um, And then that leads up to her chasing her son which causes her <laughs> so inevitable stupid. death I, I, yeah. like it's, that, I think that's a big problem with the horror of this movie is when people are doing things that are really stupid <laughs> and like yes you can justify being like oh she's possessed or a hellish dimension whatever but as an audience you're just like Dude, it's obviously a vision. Don't yeah. fucking well, chase It's not this even kid. obvious to me as the audience what is what is psychological and what is physical. Yeah. Because in the screenplay when Miller first sees the burning man uh uh, what it, I, I said it's during the part where the gravitational waves are destroying their ships, right? He's Miller's trying to contact the people who are on the bridge and find out what's happening. The Lewis, the Lewis and Clark, and instead of uh, Stark replying of what's going on, a man's voice crackles back saying, "Don't leave me." That's it, and it's mm. like that guy that he screwed before, right? Then uh, Miller sees like there's flames on his visor. And he turns and he sees this vision of this guy burning, right? But then it doesn't just cut. Like in the movie, when he encounters this burning guy, he's like, oh, this crazy guy's on fire, and then cut to a different scene. Instead, Miller blinks, and it all disappears. Oh, right. So now so much we, better. we know it's psychological. Yeah. In the movie, that seems to kind of happen sometimes, but then there's other times it's like, okay, they're both actually covered in blood, so that's real blood. And I just didn't know what was like in the mind or what's real. Well, and I think that's like, oh, it's an okay like long-term goal of your movie is to be like, I don't know what was real and what was psychological, but it's it's from the beginning, it's just like, all muddled. It's, it's not. So it's not. Jumbled you up. can like take different interpretations. It's just like. Eh. Oh, and not only did I not know the, the realityness of it, I just didn't know like spatially where are people. Yeah. It, it was easy to follow <laughs> on the page, and I mean, when it's written, it's like there's solid lines, like, like exterior of the ship. Now they're in the interior of the ship. But in this one, it was like, wait, Miller's outside walking around in a, in an EV suit suddenly. Like, where is everybody and why? Because they just they cut everything too soon. Yeah, they got rid yeah. of all these like interstitial stuff that I need to have. Yeah. Connective I mean, I tissue. Think, I think they did, did a pretty good job of like letting us know in what location people were at any given time. Like I under I under I recognize the med bay and the bridge and the exterior of the ship obviously. So I don't know. I wasn't confused that much about that, but it was a bit confusing about uh what are we doing on the ship right now? What's the current objective to kind of like get to the bottom? It seems like everyone's just kind of running around doing stuff. Like I'm going to hang out in the med bay for a bit. Like we have twenty hours of breathable air, people. Like let's let's yeah, let's, let's figure it. something out here. 
The one time I got confused about where they were was when I believe it was DJ or maybe it was Smith. I, those two characters. Smith is the pilot with like the British or English accent, and then uh, DJ was Cooper like, is the pilot. Which one what? got no, cut Co- in half? Oh no, sorry, not Cooper. Is the, yeah, no, you're right. Smith is the pilot. My bad. My bad. Which one got cut? Tr- DJ. DJ got cut like down yeah, the chest. JD. Okay, so it was Smith inside of uh, the Lewis and Clark, uh, and then um, Doctor William Weir comes in with the bomb and plants the bomb in there somewhere and then leaves. Oh my gosh, yes. That was so confusing. I did get confused as to where they were because when he at first had opened the thing and found the bomb, I thought he went and pressed it and then like that... Was diffusing or something. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was going to make the whole um, event horizon explode. But then he just stares at it and then it explodes and on second watch, Wait, I realized huh? that that was the actual bomb that was planted and mm-hmm. not oh, a yeah. bomb not, that not was like... like a panel to defuse yes, it. He's okay, actually exactly. looking at the bomb. Yes. He sees there's five seconds left. And he's like, there's nothing I can do. Yes. And he blows Which up. is so yes. funny because there's a disarm button on the bomb. <laughs> yes. And he just <laughs> stares at it. And then he's like, oh. And then because this is a, this isn't like a bomb made by a terrorist that's a, like you can't defuse. It's like it's <laughs> an explosive meant to so have a practical purpose. Why not have your kid? <laughs> Let, let's talk about the logistics of this for a second. <laughs> Why the fuck would you have an exploding thing? Because, like, you have two ships. Yeah. Why would it be yeah, an explosion? Now you're on Riley's side. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, I recognize that this movie is really stupid, for sure. <laughs> but, like, why uh, would you make it explode, not just separate? Yep. Why would it just separate? Because hey. the explosion, you're going to damage the ship. Oh, you know, but, uh, <laughs> David, that's because uh, it's uh, it's just better for the movie. It's and hell. It makes, and it's it, hell and it, dimension. And it's more exciting for the movie, and it makes you excited because there's explosions. I can see how Congress so made means, them yeah. put the bombs so, actually, in. So that means it's a better choice to do because no, it has, it has the, that effect. The demons planted those bombs. Right. They're actually not part of the event horizon. <laughs> the demons in hell put the bombs I'm blaming in. the man. They built the ship the to man. be practical, and then the man was like, uh, what if this doesn't work? You should probably put some fail safes in there. Mm. Oh my God. A man, stick it to him. Stupid. Um, Speaking we... of buttons, though, can we talk about oh, yeah. that? <laughs> this is the best scene ever when Justin's in that. I think it's Justin. He's like in a separate room, and everyone's on the other side of the door, and they're like, "Just don't kill yourself. Just he's in press, airlock. Press this oh, button right God. now. Don't shoot yourself into space. Instead, yeah. come in here, and then <laughs> his hand goes to this button." <laughs> <laughs> And both <laughs> buttons are side by side. Like, I would have thought there was just one button for him to yeah. press, but instead it's a like an LCD panel with two buttons, like, Inner good door. or bad, good yeah. or bad, and his finger's like, what? <laughs> on one of them, and then he goes, psych! And he <laughs> yes. the other one. <laughs> Justin! Yeah. yeah, that's where that so comes funny. in. Baby yeah. bear! There's so many just, I like his performance, though. I thought it was, Justin? like, weird and scary, and, like, because he's, like, possessed for half of it, and then as soon as he's doomed himself, like, he snaps to consciousness, and I was like, oh, that sucks. I thought it was pretty, That's pretty cheesy whack. when he wakes up and, like, grabs uh, DJ's collar or whatever, and it's like, what did you see, or whatever, he's like... <laughs> The dark. Yeah, that's, yeah. <laughs> and, like, your eyes don't immediately explode in the vacuum of space. That's not how that works. What but they freeze? should. Like, did his eyes explode? Well, what's the blood? That came from his mouth, I thought. No, it comes out of his eyes. Did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Man, okay. yeah. you should not do fluid simulations in the 90s. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> They're don't. bad. Just Especially the like anti- flubber. Yeah, the, the, the one... <laughs> When there's the coolant in the core or whatever, yeah. when they're touching it, oh, it's Man, so they, they bad. were like high on their own supply so there, high. being like, look at these freaking fuel <laughs> simulations, man. Look at this cool. Oh, it looks so good in yeah. here. Oh, we did it so good. Even when Weir is in his apartment at the beginning, there's a time where he looks at a faucet and there's like a VFX drip. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. why? Like, why? Because I, I don't know. In the screenplay, it says uh, he looks over at the faucet because the bathtub is behind him but like racks focus to the bathtub and then a drip that's about to drip from the faucet swells uh like impossibly large before dripping Mm. but so i guess that's why okay if it's going to be impossible let's do it with vfx but in the movie it wasn't bigger it was just a normal drip so i think there were were definitely a few shots where i'm like they only included the shot to show look what we can do with this uh fluid cgi stuff like yeah it was i imagine that it was impressive i mean like all the objects kind of floating around in zero g uh cgi and like the, the opening of the movie i think i was like uh I feel like this looks worse now, having been sharpened up to like fit on our displays and stuff. Like maybe in a VHS, it looked fine, but it looks pretty fake. Whose now. theory was it that it always looks better? Like uh, VFX looks better in the theater. Is it one of you guys? That's me, because they have this control over contrast and everything. Like every oh, they maybe. control over every element of it. You know what they could have done though, Riley, if they were really high on their horse, 
is uh, the design of the black hole itself. Because mm-hmm. on in the screenplay, it's not encased in metal like it is in the movie. Instead, it's it's like a formless, deep, black, organic, l- I like, loved that. lifelike mm-hmm. ball. Yep. Spoiler alert for the show Dark. It's like what they show in Dark. Have mm. you seen that show? Oh my God, no! I I, I watched like the first yeah. three episodes or something. They eventually show black holes in that show, and they they just look like that. Yeah. And yeah. so it, it was supposed to look like that with some metal rings like orbiting it, but instead yeah. they just made it all practical. Yeah, I I get what you're saying, Riley. Going back to it, because like <laughs> it's a it's a Hellraiser set. Like it's yes. not a yeah, it's, it's not like a real space. space. Yeah, for sure. And I was on board for that. I knew what I was getting into. Like the only thing I knew about this movie was it's a they warp to hell. Yeah, I guess. I guess <laughs> That's that. I guess if if I knew if I went into this movie being like it's Hellraiser in space or like it's a stupid schlocky stupid horror movie in space, it's like stupid. Okay, I don't care. <laughs> but I think I was kind of like, you know, from the trailers and from the synopsis, I was kind of like, okay, this is like sort of an alien vibe. You yeah. know, it's like sci-fi but horror. But instead, it's stupid horror. But sci-fi. And I think that's a fair, there's a fair criticism too that the movie's kind of confused as to what kind of horror it is. Because the first half, it's kind of cosmic horror a little bit. And then by the end, it is just Hellraiser. It's like, we're just doing demonic (laughs) shit. And like, did you guys find yourself ever scared in this movie? No. Yeah, not even even a little bit for me either. And like the, the... the violent stuff is super fucked up. Like the dude with like the stake going through the back of his head through his yeah. teeth. And like when I was reading the stuff that was cut and like, I'm not going to read it. It's really fucking scary. <laughs> like really unsettling. Yeah. Uh, there, and I'm, I'm, I'm actually glad that just didn't make it. Right. Like, it's just like, I don't know. I just don't like well, horror for the sake of horror. Like yeah. I want a purpose to it. And it's just so torture porny. I totally, I, I think that's, I think that's a huge problem I, that I have with, with the genre of horror in general is when they, it, it often devolves into that. And I think that like, if you can, if you can capture some sort of dread, you can do whatever you want in the mm-hmm. movie. You can have all the torture porn you want as long as there's something there to latch onto and actually make me feel something. Well, this concept could have had both, right? Yeah. Because yeah. you get all the crazy health stuff, but also it's just scary on its own being like, what would a black hole do? Fuck, we don't know. Yeah, yeah. Like the cosmic horror, no, but, the unknowable. But even if we spend a bit more time kind of like, if they, well, I'm, now I'm, now I'm kind of walking it back. Like if they didn't show us so uh, grotesquely what the hell dimension is like, maybe would have dreaded a bit more. Well, I think, though, a big thing is that, like, yeah, these things are disgusting and gross, but they're not creative. Or, like, it's not like hell is a, like, whoa place. It's just like, oh, people fucking eat each other. Like, that's yeah. not interesting. Yeah, you're right. I think there's a certain element of, like, okay, a teenager could come, could come totally. up with this. And this person's shoving a lead pipe into yeah. this other guy's this butt. absolute <laughs> chaos. <laughs> there was, yeah. there was like, Sarah, yeah. though, as, like, a person who likes gore yes. for the sake of it. Uh, what do you think? <laughs> um, I think the gore was fine. Um, this movie does gore not for the sake of it being scary, but for the sake of shock factor, mm-hmm. even though it's not necessarily shocking. Mm-hmm. Um, like, it's supposed to represent hell or be like hell, um, but the hell that's, like, in the human mind and not the hell that everybody is, like, supposed to know, like burning flames underground dark and Mm -hmm. devilish like this is just a different kind of hell that they're trying to represent uh and they do that but just not very well well i I don't think i want that i don't want like a red dude with a pitchfork (laughs) yeah i want like existential dread i want to be like 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 this extreme isolation like this crazy loneliness like i've heard hell described as like just complete isolation. You're by yourself. Right. There's nothing, yeah. no sound. You're just totally alone. And like, I think it'd be way more interesting if the hell dimension was like, not just fucked up human shit. <laughs> it was like yeah. something so much bigger than that. Yeah. Like we can impale people on sticks yeah. here. Dude. You know, like We're on the internet. <laughs> it's yeah. on the internet. The, yeah. uh, the gore in this movie reminded me very much of the gore that they show in the Saw franchise. Oh, 100%. Like t- hostile. But even yeah. worse yeah. because there's no context to it. Yeah. yeah. It's exactly. just like flashing images and they flash too too soon. Yeah. Yeah. Keep yeah. them on screen. Make me really look so, at it. So That'd like, be gross. Well, I, yeah. You guys the have... only one you really pick up is, is like the, 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 like the eyes. Yeah. Like the other ones, like I, I didn't really realize there was like a fucking threesome where they're eating a third person. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Yeah. I did not see that. That, that. that video log showing what the crew members were doing. Yeah, but I didn't, like I people didn't, are doing it and killing each other at the same yeah, time. Yeah, I did yeah. not pick up on it. It was just chaos. Yeah. I was like, oh. yeah. There's a bunch of skin and blood and stuff. How is the ship alive? <laughs> I don't get that. Like I don't get the sense that the ship is alive. 
and I think that's a big problem with the movie is like I uh, I don't really get how like the 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 infiltration of evil is happening. Yeah, and I I even beyond that, it's very confusing because yeah. they that doesn't really give a like an easy explanation as to why an object going to this dimension then comes back with sentience. Like I thought it yeah. was just a chaos dimension or whatever, but. The way that they describe it in the movie, I think Stark is talking to Miller, and she's like, "I've been looking at some of the readings, and I've been like piecing together things based on the evidence, <laughs> and and it's uh, it's almost like the ship has some sort of immune system yeah. oh, that's that reacting to, reacting to people as we explore it, and it's like there's a life force of some kind." Uh, and then he says back to her, he's like, what are you telling me? That the ship is alive? Yeah. <laughs> like, how are we so coming to this conclusion so based yeah, on we're this? Not, we're not there yet. The movie like people, took like six logical At that point, steps. some people have had some hallucinations. Yeah. But like, how are we? That's a that's a bit of a jump here. This, yeah, so like, this, maybe people are spooked. This you know, mechanical because it's structure. A, it's a spooky situation. <laughs> and it's like, I think the ship is alive. Okay, I'm listening. Yeah. Well, like, I think there's a missed opportunity because like maybe with the sound design or something, you can build out how the ship is responding to them. Yeah. Like, there's so many layers of, or things you could do. Yeah, where they like, try to like, they do something. They double down on it because like, the, we've seen other movies where an inanimate object is the monster. Like totally. the Unstoppable, sh- the train is the monster. Yeah, or The Shining, like the hotel really feels yeah. alive. But yeah. this, they just kind of talk about it, but they never really show it. Yeah, yeah. Totally. It would be cool to like see a, a, an instrument panel or something. They're trying to do something and it like reverses what they're trying totally. to do. Kind of hear like, it groaning when it blows yeah. up. Yeah. Like, the only thing, I guess, is like the door being slammed open. Like when like the, mon- so, like, the like, monster is like... Yeah, but at that point, what? Who's the monster? I don't get it. There's I don't no get monster it. at that think, point because where this, is on the other side? This movie would have been yeah. really well served if there was survivors from hell, and like they were the monsters yes. to start, and then it, it evolves from there and it becomes more grotesque right. or something. Right. Because it's just so. There's just that whole middle section where I'm like, what the fuck is happening? They would be the white blood cells of the immune system. <laughs> Holy shit, the Osmosis Jones. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> the Event Horizon. It's literally. I want to talk Jones. a little bit about the sound design in this movie because we talk about the music. It's not very good. I think the sound sound design is pretty thin and like, yeah, you can argue it's in space. There is no sound. I get it. Oh, right. except when there is. Yeah. But yeah, there is. When there's people outside totally. in the vacuum of space, like going, whoa. Yeah, and like, you have a, a a demon ship. It makes cool sounds, man. A demon ship. Yeah. Fucking that screams. If it has the spiky cathedral black yeah, hole, you can <laughs> you can make up this artifice. I want a chorus. The only sound thing I really liked in this movie is I can't remember the character's name, but not the Laura Dern character, but the other one, the other female character. Uh, Peters. Wait, Laura Dern's actually in this? No, no, but, no. no. But uh, Joelle Richardson's or whatever. There's Stark. Stark, Stark. Stark is Joelle Richardson. Stark. Don't tell me you don't like they Peters. Weren't, they were just like to me. I the, the casting agent. They were just told them like. Find a Laura Dern. Yeah. Wait, <laughs> How do you want to do her hair? Her. Like Laura Dern in Jurassic Park. Uh, but the other the other character, Stark? Stark, yeah. Anyways, she's hearing a sound and like you don't really know what it is, but it's like kind of familiar and your brain's trying to make this connection. Because you're like, oh, that's like a sound I know. But it's a Wilhelm scream. It's really, <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but it's really unsettling. And then it turns out that it's a zipper undoing itself. And I think that's a great use of sound where like your brain is working against you where it's like, it's working to try and like recognize the sound, and so it's working a million miles a minute. Yeah. Um, and then when it finally makes the connection, you're like, "Oh, this is the worst possible version of this." And I think that's a great use of sound for horror. I just wanted to point out that what one z- good what is use. That? What it's is when it? she is imagining her kid, and so it. it oh, unzips. that's not Stark. That's Peters. Yeah, that's, that's Peters. Peters. That's not Laura. You Dern. lied to me. <laughs> no, I was <laughs> confused about who you're talking about for the Joseph Peters. Peters. How yeah. does she look like Laura Dern? The no, other no. one. Stark is played by Jolie Richardson. Richardson. She looks like Laura Dern. <laughs> Peters is played by Kathleen Quinlan. She's the in the med bay. Yeah. yeah. That's who we're talking and about. And then, so she she sees that there's something inside of this tent. Like, she can see the fingers on the walls and stuff like that. So she grabs a scalpel. She opens it up. Then it's her son in there. Ooh. And in the movie, you see his, like, Sores? maggoty, yeah. sore-ridden legs. In the screenplay... You don't, and instead you see there's like um, he's in like a bag, like a corp, mm. like a body bag, uh-huh. and the bag covers his legs. But she can tell that within the bag there's like the movement of snakes, Ooh. like it's full of snakes. Snakes. Is, so two different ways to go. Yeah, he's a snake one's more kid. explicit in the movie. It's like more explicit and snake it, boy. <laughs> <laughs> My son is a snake. <laughs> yeah, this is the X Men origin film. Um, I was so confused in that scene because I'm like, what is that? What is that tent thing? Like, was that was the tent thing part of the hallucination, or was yes. that there the whole time? No, I think it was to, part of the to hallucination. To me, it was when pretty... it ends, the the table's bare, isn't it? Yes. Oh, but yeah, when yeah. it ends, she looks down, and the tent thing is still on the table. Is it? 
That's all. So good. There's something in there. That not separately matters. I understood that like there's something in there that's trying to get out. No, no, no. And no, no, we really don't matters. want. We don't want to know what that thing I is. I get the point of the scene. It's it's just the execution. I don't get it. I don't get it. Here's Fair a enough. nitpick. The part where I think it's the pilots freaking out. And then DJ, the doctor guy, just like suddenly puts a scalpel to his neck. Yeah, yeah. that was so <laughs> weird. What the Who fuck? Who would do that? That whole yeah. scene was fucked. It was just <laughs> wrong. It, was, it didn't make any sense. I was yeah. so, I, so upset. I referenced back to the screenplay and I was like, did this stupid shit happen in that? And it did, but he does it for like a second, like an instant. He puts it against like, the dude's neck and then he drops it. And he's mm. like, I'm sorry. I, I don't know why I did that. Yeah. And, and that's, that's, that makes yeah. sense. Cause it's like, okay, they're starting to lose their minds. Totally. Yeah. And, but I, I can understand that happening to a couple characters, but it's like, there are five or six characters in that scene and they all start doing stuff like that. But then at the same time, they're trying to tell people to act reasonably. Well, that's, it, it was just, there was too many people being affected by the ship or whatever in, in one scene. Well, and you, you like, kind of need a grounded character so that, like, you understand that yes. the others are, are losing it. Like, yes. The Shining. It's like you have Shelley Duvall, and she's losing it, but she's not losing touch with reality right. so that you can have Jack Torrance totally go off the deep end. Yeah. Uh, and that works. Whereas here, there's not really anyone that stays grounded. Like, Lawrence Fishburne mostly stays grounded, but right. he's still having his visions and he's going kind of crazy. Man, that tunnel, the meat grinder... Have you guys ever been to like a Ripley's Believe It or Not? Yeah, it, it's that's exactly what it is. Literally, it's a Ripley's Believe It or Not little tunnel. Wait, you've been to? What does that mean? Where? Like, it's like a. It's like I a, know there's a, a show, but you're saying no, there's no, like no. an establishment. They have one in New York. There's in one in San, Hollywood. Yeah, in San, I went to the one in San Francisco. It's like a, it's like a little museum of like weird things. They'll have like wax mo- models and like kind of interesting artifacts or whatever, and it's just like cool stuff. Curiosities. Curiosities. That's exactly what it is. But the, the one I went to has a tunnel and it's exactly that. A little metal grate way and then a yeah. rotating like, thing with lights. I think, yeah. I think the I went to one of those at the at the PNE. Yeah. Which is like uh for people not from Vancouver, uh it's like a fair we have here. And they had a haunted house. Yeah. yeah. And they had one of those. And it is not effective at all in the movie. Oh really? In the, in the movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the, in real life it's like whoa. Yeah, I was but like, in the movie, stumbling. I'm like yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's so cheesy, and I, I've defended that ship in other ways, but I will not defend that. <laughs> I will not go down that yeah. down that hill. So many. I yeah. have a nitpick when they're like looking at the clips. It's like of happy things on Earth. The static in between the clips is like a horror static. It's like, <laughs> oh, I hated that. And I was like, this is so cheesy that, and artificial. Like, it's when Peters is looking at footage of her son. Yeah, establishing that she has this <laughs> handicapped son. But it's like, oh yeah, they're trying to build the tension with audio, but it's such a cheap trick it's like like happy happy <laughs> happy happy <laughs> and you're like yeah. what the fuck why did they do this man uh are we into nitpicks basically oh i'm i'm into it um why <laughs> have these guys movie. never heard like it's 2047 <laughs> i'm sure they've Blade probably Runner. heard of something like a gravity <laughs> drive or a warp drive or something it's like wait how does that work it's like yeah. I'm sure they're, they're, they're astronauts. They're, the spa- they're space How crew. have they not heard of this? By, like, yeah. we're already, we have spaceships out in space. You think these people have never heard of uh, the technology that everyone wants yeah. all the time? Yeah. <laughs> like, in every sci-fi, it's like, that's the thing? Yeah, you can't make stuff about the future where people are less aware than we are right now of what yeah. is out there. And I guess, I guess maybe the in-universe explanation is that they're military, and they're not actually, like, astronauts. They're just, like, blue-collar astronauts maybe <laughs> i but don't know it's hard, why man. why when they go on the ship is the first thing they try and do to pull a cd out of like a <laughs> cd tray i don't get that like it's such an artificial tension builder where it's like then she has to be focused on this like, cd and she can't get it out and the music's ramping up and she's like i gotta get yeah. a cd i oh, gotta get this it's, fucking it's CD. stuck in there with hell dimension goo <laughs> like what is that cd even <laughs> it's doing? the log yeah, but like, is that like the first thing they have to do? Like, isn't there a ship to secure? Isn't there like other stuff to do? Like, I just thought it was hilarious that there's so a CD. Weird. I think they're just trying yeah. to get as much as they can from the ship they in thought that, a reasonable amount okay, of time. Why, why does uh, DJ stick gum to the screen of his ship? Like he sticks, he takes a that gum, was a very strange puts it on the screen. It's such a weird thing. And like, the monitor dude, was like hanging off. That's the, your the workplace. Wall. Like that's that's where you work. Why don't you take pride in it? I think it was. I think it was meant to be kind of like a good luck thing that the military types do or whatever, but it was so weird because I was so confused. I'm like, why is the monitor hanging off the wall? Like, gum on the screen can't be good for the touch screen. I don't know. 
Ah. Can we talk about the time where the guy uh, Cooper is out in space and it's like this <laughs> oh performance? You know, people uh, they talk. You've heard people talk about how you know it's it's way better to be on a on a real set and have a practical thing in front of you so the actors can act to something natural mm. instead of being on a green screen set yeah. talking to like a tennis ball or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and that must have happened here because this guy's out in space and the. Tr- <laughs> His, his acting, I'm saying, like, he's trying to get back to this ship, yeah, right? Life yeah. or death. He's like, okay, well, hmm, if I, uh, I'm gonna turn on my boosters and here I go! Yeah. It's like, totally. So it's here like, I go, motherfucker! Yeah, yeah, it's like, uh, Anakin Skywalker and Phantom Menace, like, woohoo! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. I kind of like that. It felt, you mean you it like felt, Phantam Menace? No, I, I liked the, uh, when he, when he gets, when he, ah! Oh. When he figures out the oxygen booster thing, it just and feels then, so out of place take, to me. Really? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Feels like it's a different movie. I, yeah, maybe, it's a tonal mess. Yeah, maybe tonal. I liked it because I'm like I would have liked more of this in the movie because Cooper. It, it, I think it's consistent with Cooper's character. He's kind of the wise cracking member of the crew the whole time. We need so. a Will Smith. Yeah, we need a. We, we need a pl- the real one. We need a plucky survivor. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of I don't know. I thought it was fine. I think it's. It's just a little goofy, like the whole idea too of like being able to land. Well, like he's falling uh, yeah. out well, in the into atmosphere, like that's to be able was, to land this tiny little point in that, space. Like Ooh. that's what I was gonna say. Logistically, that would there's no yeah. way he would be able to launch back towards the planet yeah. from as far away as he was and like yeah. not burn up or d- splat yeah. on the yeah. In the kind of same vein, I was really annoyed with Flor- Lawrence Fishburne when he's going back to get uh, Justin, like. Dude, like you got to be a little more careful. Like you're in space. If you miss, you're just gone. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. just like <laughs> climbing like a yeah. ladder, and I'm like, man, no, you got to yeah. be careful. But whatever. And he didn't it's have life a tether or, or anything, but I guess he did have like I think they have thrusters and magnetic boots. So I, mean, I guess so. They they're supposed to have these um th- like these thumpers they call them when they first get onto the ship. They they put these onto the doors to test what's on the other side to mm. see if there's air inside or if it's gonna yeah. be oh really like yeah. like breathable and stuff. Uh, they're not in the movie. Hmm. No, no, they, they? they have one. I think when they first go to the airlock, they talk about it. When they first dock in, they're like, there's no oxygen or whatever. They have like a thing to read on the other side. Okay, they do. Okay, good. Because yeah. that was just another thing where. That's cool. You know, where like it would have been slower and, and made it yeah. more, have more tension and stuff. And just on that vein, I know I already talked about this, but I forgot to read out this one quote, which is, yeah, just okay. says it all. Uh, you know, when it's supposed to be dark in there and they only have the, hel- the helmet lights, Justin's breath echoes in his helmet as he moves forward. Mm. Like, that is not in this movie. No. It's, there's no, like, just... <sighs> yeah. I mean, I'm alone in here with right. my tether. Right. They right. needed that. Yeah. Yeah, they needed more just kind of, like, moments with gravity. Just moments where I'm kind of like, all right, I'm thinking about what this character is going through. Yeah. And uh, but we don't learn enough about any character. I think all the anti gravity stuff it looks really bad in this movie, except when the when Weir has blown open the hold and Fishburne is crawling back on the wire, <laughs> but he's being like whipped around. <laughs> that looks so intense. I was like, yeah. whoa! Oh, you liked it? I loved it. <laughs> oh, I thought okay. it was like he's fighting for his life. I think. I think. I got that feeling. I don't know. I'm I'm conflicted on it. On one level, I I feel what you're saying, and I think that that it can have that effect. But on another level, it just looks so goofy. Like I didn't feel, really. No, I was like la- I was laughing yeah. at it because it looked like out of a comedy or something. It looked like a, a fast motion scene from Airplane or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was laughing too. I, okay, okay. Oh, I want to movie... take that clip and put the clown music over it now. <laughs> I, I I think I liked it though because there's there's lots like every explosion in this movie is insane like mm. they did not follow the rules they made explosions <laughs> way too big way too close to people like oh. there's really insane ones like i read a quote clo- a quote from uh what's her face joelle richardson mm. and she's talking about how like her and samuel there's a there's a shot of her and samuel at the console and they were told like we're gonna give a count one two three and on three there's gonna be an explosion and they heard one two and then they blacked out and were on the floor because the explosion was just too intense and like knocked them out unconscious mm. and like Apparently that was just a constant thing. These explosions were constantly towing the line. And I felt that in this movie. Like there's a few explosions that are like, I see a person diving out of the explosion. I'm like, that didn't look safe. That looked so insane. And like, you can see the ship, like the different parts, like ripping apart. And I'm like, how do they do that? It looks so good. They went to Neptune. (laughs) (laughs) There are like a lot of explosions in this movie, but not really any build up to them. Mm. Like, I feel like the whole movie is just like, Waiting, waiting, waiting. Something really exciting. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Something really exciting. That's like, no fair. tension. It's, yeah. That's totally yeah, fair. Yeah, exactly. Which, wait, so which draft of the script did you read? Because uh, apparently the first draft had, this, had the ship infested with aliens. Oh, uh-huh. no. Usually when you uh, pull up a script, you get like the shooting script. 
what oh, they okay. call it. Oh, okay. So this was the very first one. Interesting. So they changed it at some point from being aliens to being the hell dimension or whatever. I have a question, and maybe the screenplay answers this. Um, so when... Uh, is it Stark? When Stark... No. No. When Peters is in the same room as Justin when he's on the bed and then he disappears and then there's like noise that she hears and she's staring at like the biohazard door and she's just staring and she's not moving or doing anything and then there's big explosions and then she runs into the cockpit room or whatever it is with all of the other people and they close the door. There's like something that's pushing against the door, pushing into the door, but it, there it's never clarified what that is. Like... The the gravity dimension thing isn't open. Mm. The guy just disappears. And then all of a sudden there's somebody or something pushing on to the door. The ship's alive, dude. Yeah, but like it just... But is how? it though? Because like, why does Sam Neill have to turn on the hell dimension when it turned itself on before? <laughs> and then also, right after that, they hear like the alarm that Justin has gone into the... Airlock. The airlock. Yeah. And then they're not worried about whatever was just pushing into the door. They open the door and go to yeah. see where yeah, Justin yeah. is. Man. Yeah. Well, it's a bad movie, so. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys like the full circle ending where it's like she's waking up and having this bad vision just like Weir had this bad vision at the beginning? So that it's like maybe they're still trapped in hell. Like maybe they never Oh, that's escaped. not how I read that. Oh, how did you read I, it? I just read it as like. They're they're just forever altered by the shitty experience they had. Mm. They're traumatized. I think it, uh, to me it's like one of those like it could be that they're still trapped and they're not like we don't know. I uh, think that unfortunately the movie I would have liked that as well. I I I read it as they escaped and I feel like. But why would but why would it be so similar to the way that he woke up? Be, because they were trying to do something and failed in the execution. <laughs> but I think that the fact that I picked up on it means that they it's possible. I think, succeeded. Well, I think it might be just like kind of poetic symmetry. Sort of type of thing, George but I, I don't think it necessarily like uh, indicates that they're trapped in the hell dimension. I would have loved that tiebreaker. We need a tiebreaker. Oh sure, go ahead. Oh, I I totally agree with James on this one. Like, ah. I, I, ah. I we see that. Um, I'm gonna go jump into a black hole now. <laughs> <laughs> see you later. <laughs> we see the like the whole movie is about grief and. Uh, Whoa! Be, what? I, Kind of, okay, kind of. We didn't talk um, about that at all. <laughs> no, we didn't. We didn't. But that's how I read it. Um, and then they finally escape this place that's haunting them. But even though they've escaped, she's still being haunted. Wait, like, let's talk about this grief theme. Yeah, we did. Okay, wait. Do you have a point it. about that? I can see it. I can totally see um, it. I just found a thing about it. Okay, what did I write here? I said the story also focuses on guilt and regret and grief. Uh, Weir's whole character is based around the grief, the grief on the loss of his wife, who killed herself uh, supposedly because he was too busy working on the event Horizon the whole time, mm. uh, which may be why he has such an attachment to the ship is because it was what he had before he lost his wife. And the, from the deleted scene, um, they say the official report blamed Weir's design for the ship's loss. Oh. So he feels guilty. Yeah. I see. Oh, this would have been good to have in the movie. <laughs> yeah, this is pretty essential information. <laughs> Man, and yeah, of course, uh, Miller ha feels guilt over uh, letting his crewman die, and that's kind of the exactly. main thing we learn about him. And the mom yeah. that had abandoned her kid for two months. Yeah. That would have been <laughs> such a cool plot line <laughs> yeah. to have us like understand that that uh, Weir felt guilt over both his wife's suicide and for the Event Horizon. Yeah, he needs he needs the crew of the Event Horizon to yeah. be alive. As it yeah. is, we just kind of get the feeling that he's sad because his wife died. He needs the ship to be working, so that explains why he's always like, nah, -uh, it's probably an optical yeah. thing that you saw because I ne really need this ship yeah. to be awesome. Because there's another line from that scene that says uh, the colonel's talking to his lieutenant after Weir's gone. I don't know why I'm just like, Stretching my pack as I do this. Um, <laughs> Feels he good. He says, Flex. if the Advent Horizon had worked, Weir would have gone down in history as the greatest mind since Einstein. Mm. Oh, why? Also well, sets him up as being really smart. Could have been good. Apparently, Man. Philip Eisner wrote the movie after a family tragedy. Hmm. Ah, that Recently entered a multi-picture writing agreement in an effort to force himself to get back to work. He pitched the idea of The Shining in Space. Um... Oh, well, that's all it said about the family tra tragedy. So interesting. But apparently yeah. that was the impetus. He does, doesn't have much of a career. <laughs> He's only kind of a movie every five-ish years with a break about 13 years in between his last movie and his current movie. And he's a teacher in uh, oh, UCLA. Poor guy. poor guy has a day job and he wrote something this good. 
I just I, yeah, it's yeah. Not, it sucks. That it's not his fault. If the screenplay is good and they just but- butchered it, like Paul W. S. Anderson mm-hmm. just butchered it. Uh, yeah, they take out this freaking. You know what? Another thing that pissed me off. We didn't say this is they took out this scene, which I have argued is awesome and critical, and in its place. They have whatever exposition comes on the ship, but also they added all this crap on the screen. Like you said, like there's four different 2021 oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and 2046. This, <laughs> they added all that shit. That's not not written on the it's, page on the screenplay. It's you so, didn't need it. So unnecessary. I don't need to <laughs> know when mine. Yeah. Super elegant to just, just a shit show. Yeah. I, I was just probably pissed, man. Yeah. He probably hates this movie so much. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, it is fun to imagine what could have been, like, with what the original director's cut is. And, like, it's lost. The footage is lost because they stored it in a salt mine in Tasmania. <laughs> in fuck? Transylvania. I can't remember. Like, they just did a bad job storing the footage, and so then they tried to go back to restore it. It was just too degraded. Well, maybe it'll what? come back in seven years from the so they, <laughs> hell they, they found a version on a VHS, but, I mean, a VHS is pretty low quality, and so we'll see. Maybe AI upscaling can make it watchable, but... Who cares? Just, re- just redo it. <laughs> yeah, and, like, that's happening. I'm ex- I am genuinely excited about it, because, like, there's a lot of potential to this idea. Mm. Uh, it just needs focus or, like... Yeah, and I, I can see a TV show being really good. You focus one, one each episode is like kind of a character story. Yeah, it would be like yeah. it or lost yeah. or something. Yeah, you go to their backstory and then you kind of develop their fears and then you have kind of like the culmination at the end and like there can be a lot of really cool stuff because like using horror as a as a kind of a vehicle for like exploring regret and guilt works really well. Like that's right. the thing that works. For sure. <sighs> if it were to be another new feature film, and let's pretend this uh, series didn't uh, exist. Who would be in it? Who would make it? Who would do the best job? If if they would remake it? Yeah. Ugh. I mean, because I don't know any horror directors really, I just go to Ari Aster because he's sweet. Yeah. Uh, I, don't, yeah. I don't know if he has a sci-fi. Does he have a sci-fi I don't know. bend? I don't know. You know it'd be cool to put on a horror film as Denis Villeneuve. Yeah. He's, I, I don't, could see I don't him think he's, he's done one. He's great space, space yeah, brain. Yeah, Arrival was great. Uh, like, have you seen like, Prisoners? No, it has it's kind of yeah, oh, it's oh, kind of okay. horror-y. So if we t- take like a rival and just like add some, some horror stuff type of Is that stuff. That ten more tentacles. Resident to horror each? expert. I I would prefer if they just left it at what it was. <laughs> what? <laughs> who's, I the, <laughs> who's the guy who did the the Doctor Sleep and House on Haunting Hill? Oh, uh, uh, Mike, Flanagan. Mike Flanagan. Maybe oh yeah. Maybe. Well, he really good. likes those shots where he yeah. goes upside down, <laughs> so he could do a lot of those. Ooh. Oh, by the way, canted shots, like when the cameras are kind of on an angle or 45, a lot of those in this movie. Hate them every time. <laughs> yeah. And the slow-mo. The slow-mo oh, drives yeah. me crazy. Uh, During some of the uh, explosions, and I think that's a technical limitation, right? Yeah. When they don't have a high-speed camera. I see. Yeah. And oh, I th- well, God. I think the, the scene where Weir is like beating up DJ in the med bay and he eventually like flays him or whatever, uh, his fight with him is basically all in slow motion until he like cuts him open. Yeah, and but, I was like, "Then we get it." Do you know what the dumbest line in this whole movie is? Is when Weir's you like, "Tell me the ship's alive." No, no, no. He's like, "Where we're going, we don't need eyes." <laughs> and then five minutes later, he has eyes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we didn't even talk about that. Yeah, like what? Weir pulls out his own eyes. Yeah, he gets cool. sucked out of the ship, and that he's and way later, scarier when he's like the eyeless. Yeah. Cut that's a scary weir. So then we're gonna bring him back, give him back his eyes, shave but, his head, but it, shave his head, <laughs> but his body is more cut up. Yeah, like uh, I don't get it. It's where like, does that's he get a, the like, cuts The from? most demonic version, I guess. But like that was so much less scary than the version before. That it's, like, yeah. it's just a shame. Like, well, giving him his eyes back alone is such a bad decision. Yeah. Maybe it's just easy for shooting, I guess. The, the idea, I, I love the theme, the, the visual motif of people, like, pulling out their own eyes yeah. and then their, like, faces all mutilated and stuff. Like, I think that's interesting as a, as a recurring visual thing. But, yeah, they just throw it out at the end. I'm like, well, okay. Yeah. I guess you do need eyes. <laughs> you you want yeah. them? So the ship design. gave them back to you? The ship has an eye manufacturing facility. <laughs> Uh, it was actually the ca- the captain of the original the original crew is still alive and he just handed he just him his handed eyes. He just handed him his eyes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Liberate te my eyes, dude. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't talk about the Latin, but the the Latin apparently is not not quite correct. accurate. Yeah, it's, whatever. The guy's not a linguist on board. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. He's like, yeah. He's just kind of yeah. knows. Everyone else is like, whoa. I'm so glad to have whoa. you around. He's like, he, he's like, oh, that <laughs> <laughs> saw that on the underside of a a Jones soda bottle cap. <laughs> <laughs> saw it on a beer coaster. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just laughing at that so obs- Is that obscure? Does everyone get that? Remember yeah. the Jones Soto? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah. Does of everyone get that? Yeah. Well, what, is that a Canadian thing? Uh, Jones, I, I think, is Canadian. But they're like Australian beer. What's that Australian beer? 
it was if, like a riddle. Okay, well, if, it has like a thing underneath the if cap. If you don't know, there's a Snapple soda called used to. Jones Soda, and the caps have little phrases on the it's underside. Great. Yeah, we Anyways, love them. My question, and this is like a real question, and I'm, the movie doesn't deserve that I ask this question. It's but, okay. Jones Soda is based in Seattle, not. Hey, oh, okay. great. Anyway, go ahead, David. Um, is the Event Horizon the first testing they've done of warp drives? Because like, yeah. Yeah. That's stupid. Why would they build this huge, multi-billion, multi-trillion dollar ship to test warp drives? Why wouldn't they do it on a smaller scale and understand if the technology works or not? Like, I think you're there's absolutely... There's a huge ship around this thing <laughs> that is like, I don't I don't know how much gold it costs. Like, whatever future currency I, they use. I allow that to be hand-waved okay. away. That, okay. For me, that's fine. It's like, maybe... You can, you can think of some reason. Because it only works at this scale. Okay. I mean, blah, blah. I, I think that Fair you're enough. right that the movie doesn't deserve uh, a, a real answer to that question. It's just like... What, whatever. Also, there wouldn't be a movie. Even when the Large Hadron Collider was uh, being booted up for the first time, people were like, well, this could simulate a black hole and it could just destroy everyone. No one knows what's going to happen. So that's they fair. wanted it to happen way the fuck away well, from I Earth. Well, I think would have, what would have made more sense, perhaps, is... Uh, the Event Horizon isn't a spaceship, it's a space station, and we put it out there on Neptune so that if anything happened, we'd be safe or whatever. That's so true. then we could have this whole movie yeah. uh, with a space it station like that would make city. more sense. It could be yeah, like a snow city. piercer. Yeah. Here's the thing that pissed me off. When I was reading the screenplay and it got to the point of the, where, there, where Miller's like, what is inside the core? What is it? And finally, Weir's like, a black hole. <laughs> I When I read that, I was like, oh. It was epic. It was an ep- epic right. delivery. I was like, shit. And then instantly everything connected in my mind. I was like, the event horizon. The ship is literally the event horizon. It is wrapped around the periphery of the black hole. Yeah. That's what right. event horizon yep. is. Science people. And the characters the- can escape. Yeah. Yes. Because yeah, the so- event horizon refers to the point at which matter and light can no longer escape being sucked into the, gra- the, the black hole. The so- ship itself is literally the event horizon. The people thing- get sucked in the and then hole. they can't escape. Exactly. Suck- and in the movie, it's just like, it's a black hole. Cut. To the next yeah. scene. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think Let it breathe. I think you're right. I think it's just an editor who was like, I got to make this snappier. And like, they got a huge, they had to cut 30 minutes from yeah. the original cut. So like. Why? Because. It, it, it was the, too gory the, the, testing. apparently. It was testing. Yeah. The people fainted in the audience because it was too gory. So you got to think, you got to turn the gore way down and you got to make it snappy. Okay. Well, they cut. Okay. Maybe they cut they, too much. But maybe what they cut wouldn't have redeemed it. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe and that's yeah. we don't know. And it, it's, it would be so interesting to get that director's cut. But I don't think it would have because the stuff that's in this movie still isn't that good. It's yes. only an hour and a half long. Like, this is the first movie we've done probably where I'm like, this needs to be a half an hour longer. Yep, 100%. Mm. It's too, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's too slow and too fast. It's, def- it's definitely too short, as in, like, they, they needed to take some more time with things. Uh, and obviously, they cut out a lot of stuff for time. But No yeah. payoffs without the buildup. But, yeah. But I will say, I had, I had a lot of fun watching this movie. I was engaged. I thought it was crazy, bonkers, silly in the way that I really enjoy my movies And that's why you gave it like a six. I gave it a 6.66. Me too. Yeah. After watching it, I was like, I feel fulfilled. I don't know why this this movie has such a bad rating. I really did. Wait, what do you mean you don't know why the movie has such a bad rating? I, okay, even after We just talked about it for an hour and a half. It was still like, I felt like I could watch it all the way through without feeling like I am not enjoying it. Were you guys bored or did were you just like this is dumb? I was so bored. Okay. I was so bored and I was thinking it's dumb. <laughs> I, think, I didn't I think th- it was boring, but I I gave it less than a 5, which yeah. means I would rather it was off. I, yeah, that's I, I fair. started getting bored as soon as I realized how bad of a movie it was. Mm. Like it wasn't like I was engaged at the beginning. I was kind of like, "All right, let's go." Like cosmic horror, you know, like going to another dimension untold horrors too crazy for the human mind to comprehend and then it turns out that the human mind totally can comprehend oh, I, it yeah. it's just getting stabbed a bunch of times yeah we're fucking and stabbing at the same which time which isn't that yeah. scary as much as it is just kind of like mechanically uh, shocking oh my gosh blood yeah. it's like so, yeah. so if there was something that was a bit more like you don't know what yeah. it is and, uh, like that would kind of bring totally. me along but as I, soon as I kind of realized it was just like oh this is like a stupid slasher I, I think know. I look for visuals a lot of my movie and that that is enough to carry me through and this movie does provide that if you like cool spaceships if you like crazy visuals like great lighting the cinematography mm-hmm. in this movie is really good and it's the guy who did like Thelma and Louise and he did aliens as well and you can really see why he got hired for this <laughs> and so he's done lots of stuff what else is some he? of that stuff is too ambitious though and it comes off cringe like when that uh at the very beginning Weir's dream the the corp his own corpse floating frozen and we see the face the face is screaming the mouth is open and the camera goes into the mouth and then it like, comes out 
of Weir's eye as he awakes. I was just like, oh, but I think it's going to be a, like that. It's going to be that's more of a director thing than a cinematographer thing. Like, he's like, I want this shot. Like that's VFX and all that stuff. Like you can't. It was I don't too, blame him. too much. Too ninety. You, you like V for Vendetta? It's a guy who did V for Vendetta. Okay. So right. if you, he's a if good you, guy. If you, <laughs> I think that if you are a David or a Sarah and you go in knowing that you like B schlock movies, uh, you might enjoy yourself. Mm. If you're looking for anything else, stay away. 100%. That's I mean, I don't want to slam this movie too hard because so many of our fans wanted us to watch yeah, it. Obviously, okay. it's well, beloved. I should say, I'm glad that you guys are here to talk about how much you love the movie because I'm not saying that, you know, I'm, not, I'm not trying to say. Too strong a word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of agree. Why, I, why enjoyed like it. I enjoyed it. it. It's gained a cult following for a reason. 100%. There are people who enjoy it, and I'm yeah. not saying you shouldn't enjoy it. I don't. Yeah. And that's fine. Well, that's the definition of a cult audience is that it's a very strong niche. Mm-hmm. And like they're it's not for everybody. Yeah, but the like people when we that watched really American like Psycho and both of you guys thought it sucked. I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. I didn't yeah. think it sucked. Long that's what, by the way, a long gave lost it podcast. Like a six. It's not lost. We're just never gonna release it. <laughs> people know about the Joker podcast. And Did we never like, release, release Joker? But they don't know about the American Psycho. I think Psycho. if we ever were to release Joker, we should just re record it. I feel like we would do so much better. We were so young back then. <laughs> oh, it's been like two years. Like, like yeah. well, one year. year and a half. I could probably watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We live in a society still. <laughs> we do. <laughs> well, I guess that means this episode's over. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Tune in next week when we're talking about WandaVision. Nice. TV show. <laughs> a TV. I never the wanted to Disney. Yeah, the first TV guest. show so we're excited. doing. Uh, but it's a, it's a cultural. Precedent. It's a cultural moment. Wow. That's we're going to get in there right as the finale comes out. And hit us up on Twitter at Carpal Critics or email us hello at carpalcritics.ca. That's it, right? Hello. Yeah. That's hello. Yeah. That's hello. Oh, was that the actual real ending? <laughs> Let's do the real it ending is now. now. What? Now. <laughs> what? And see. <laughs> <laughs>